So Thomas, hi. It's good to How see you. Neil? You can hear me okay. Yes, I know. Okay. Uh, it feels like <laughs> it feels like you know the boy in the bubble kind of thing. You know, like we're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got all these things going we're on. The, around we're all the boy in the bubble now. We're all the yeah, boy in the bubble. We're all the bubble. <laughs> So what are we going to talk about? I mean, we 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 decided we were going to do a few of these, didn't we? Like sort of regular, a regular, a regular set. So I've been quite yeah. looking forward to it, really. Well, very much looking forward, yeah. to be honest. Um, and I thought maybe a good place to start would be how we got to this incredibly well ridiculous position we're in now. Because uh, I'm looking back in March. Uh, so I was sat in a, a pub in Glastonbury with a tour group, and we were told basically we had to go home uh, just to uh, flatten the curve for uh, three weeks and uh, or two weeks. But the, I remember getting home and then waking up the following morning and just going out into the garden, and the, the atmosphere was treacle, like something somewhere had gone on. Yeah. It felt very dark. It felt very, especially in the early days, even though, the, I mean, it happened here and I still didn't believe it. It was kind of like at work, you were saying, oh, we might, have, we might not be here next weekend, we might not be here next weekend. I was like, ah, oh, it'll just blow over. And then it was like, in a matter of like hours, it went into a weird twilight world where we were told to stay home for a couple of weeks, do nothing, don't only go to go groceries. There was checkpoints on the roads and ironically all while the weather was beautiful and it was like that was the kind of annoying thing because that's the, the kind of weather you want when you go to see yeah and photograph and film ancient sites because the in, in springtime the sun is lower in the sky so the shadows are more dramatic and so on we finally had the perfect spring to do this yeah. and it could, i couldn't travel any more than 1.5 kilometers so that meant there was there was a there's a, a fairy fort what they call them here a raft not far from what I could walk within that distance but other than that completely so shut down. You, so you got up there. Well, what, we were the same sort of thing except didn't really have the travel restriction, but people were too scared to travel anyway because nobody knew what was going on. And it, I tell you, I I went through a bad time then. I don't mind admitting it actually because I, I love to plan the future and like to move on and. And we didn't know whether we were ever going to get back to doing this again. But um, I, I do I think that... I didn't think about that dark, but I just, I felt like a year of my life now has been stolen from me. A year which we'll never get back, unfortunately. Yeah. I just want to make sure there's not another one. Yeah, and I had lots of foreign trips planned as well for, to make films and stuff like that. that you know, were, were big deals I've been working on for years and had to happen this year. So... You know, it was a real, creatively, it was a bit of a catastrophe in that sense, but we're all in the same boat, you know? It's not like, you know, they're picking on just us. It's, it's Absolutely, not just one yeah. country. It's just a strangeness of the whole world is locked down. I was just talking to um, some close friends from the two groups and they were over in America, in Georgia, and they say they've all had this uh, mysterious disease and it, they basically are in bed for 10 days. Well, now they're up and about and back to work again. So, you know, things are carrying all right. But generally, don't you think the atmosphere has lifted a lot? I feel a lot more positive about things. Yeah, it's, ironically, since they released the vaccine, no matter how you feel about that, it would almost yeah. gave the, uh, the powers that be, the, the red light to start treating us kindly again or something. Uh, it was almost like they had, I, I got the impression that they finally have an opt-out clause that they can get out of doing it all wrong. They made, they've done this all wrong. And uh, this is the first pandemic in history where healthy people have been locked up without getting too political. But yeah, yeah. It, was Sweden, it was Sweden who did it right. Absolutely. And uh, one or two you yeah. know, life went on with, you know, intelligent, uh, with intelligent, you know, protocols of keeping the sick safe and, you know, but everything else was pretty much as normal and their death rates are about the same, although people make out that the, you hear this nonsense that it's much worse. Uh, that's because they, I don't believe that for a minute. They herd immunity. They were always in the end going to have to go with the herd immunity thing. Mm. All that, but they, have, they will never admit failure. But now they have the vaccine. That's why a man Hancock was crying on the TV in oh. the night in England. 
yeah. there with his crocodile tears and his, his, his dupers the like smirk uh, following that. Someone Brilliant. described someone described him as a father who makes a press conference what demanding for people wanting people to find his, his daughter who's buried on who buried under the floorboard. So it felt it was like that. I thought that was a great uh, description. That's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's sort of thing that you see. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think to me it's like they're literally their get out of jail free card, isn't it? They, they were hanging on by the fingertips and they need this to work now. This is the only way out that they can possibly follow by staying yeah. and, and, they, and they can come out saying, we did it, we're the champions, we saved you all. Yeah, they, they'll play the great saviors, didn't we do great? And the people will believe it because uh, yeah. what I've learned is more than anything else is most people are terrified cowards. I've learned that they're, they'll do anything. They, they, they're, they're, those videos they showed them in the early days of the... Uh, the, the, the people dropping dead in China, that really traumatized millions of people, traumatized them. And they're st they never got out of that spell that was cast upon them. And it was a spell as well. I tell you, one of the worst, well, the worst thing really about all this was the fear that has been injected in, into people on purpose, which is hip, pure hypnotherapy, not hypnotherapy, hypnotism. It, the people have been oh. hypnotized into fear. You ever seen the uh, we're over here on the BBC, which I I, I don't have anything to do with anymore. I've cancelled my license just basically just for this reason, because they were over and over again sold the negative, 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 and they were so that was one, so that was uh, hearing and for sight, they had uh, moving uh, murals in the background of huge viruses, and, and it was pure hypnotism. It was like be yeah, fearful, yeah, yeah. be fearful. And I think they were, uh, they did it on purpose, no two words about it, because there were sage documents saying that that's what they were going to do. But I think they were amazed about just how well it worked. And it's still happening now. People are still... Yeah, the, the combination of paranoia, fear, hypnotism, neuro-linguistic programming, Edward Bernays type mm. social engineering, it really was a black magic spell. That's the only way. That's, that's the words. I have no problem using that. that the description it was a black magic spell well it's purely black magic isn't it because if you're um if you're altering somebody's psyche against their will in a negative matter a negative form what else can it be other than black magic in order to serve yourself and that they did serve yeah. themselves because they, got, they, they managed to push through all these uh security and lockdown and other kind of uh bullshit things that they had been planning for decades to the point now where, you know, people, you know, 10 years ago, we may have laughed at Alex Jones saying we were going to have a Chinese communist type world, but that's what we have now. That's it what we have what now. Got, so yeah. That was the black magic. It allowed them to do that. That was the agency. That's what they wanted. And the, and the virus allowed them to do that. And of course, now we've got the, we've got the situation where everything that all the conspiracy theories so far have come true. And now we're hoping that the rest of them don't come true. And I think, but I think we can, we can intervene. I really think we can intervene uh, because I'm sure you agree that our thought, our thought process is form the future or form and form everything around us. So I think oh, we I'm, can... not, I'm not negative at all. I'm not negative about the future at all. No, I'm not. A, no, you don't explain more. Why? Go on. Yeah. No, I was just saying I'm not negative about it in the future in the sense that, you know, it, 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 the black magic is only good as, is only as good as the spell working. Mm. And uh, this is why I've been telling people in my own vlogs and stuff to not fall for the worst kind of terrors that they're imposing on you, that they're going to put a vaccine in you to remove your spirituality. If, you, if a vaccine removes your spirituality, you can't have much spirituality to begin with. But uh, mm -hmm. the way I see it is that they have to stop self-hexing themselves, screaming about the mandatory vaccine and this kind of thing, when the fact is that mandatory vaccines are illegal and many of us, people like me who suffer from allergies, will be exempt anyway. And all kinds of, you know, all kinds of people of other religions will be exempt from Orthodox Jews to Christian scientists. Well, that's so true. they're never going to get 100%. But what they want is enough. That they want the pot bangers and the pan bangers that they had in England. And I don't mean just to pick on England because we have those same types all over the world. But those pan banging Thursday night rituals in England, they oh, want that terrible. dead people. They want dead, the ones who took the knee yeah. and all that stuff. They want, yeah, they once they get them vaccinated, they'll be happy. Yeah, they're saying that there's no such thing as herd immunity, apart from the fact the only thing that vaccines do is produce herd immunity. So it's, it's that's a like the gas but it's all contradictions. It's all uh, uh, what's the word? I can't remember the word for it. Well, Sheldrake said one day they'll introduce a, introduce a vaccine 
that will take away your spirituality. Let's just hope that it's not. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm no. positive with you as well. They're happily enough burlesquing the, the society. I mean, uh, the, mm. the Spectator magazine did a very good article. I think it was the Spectator. Don't quote me. But it was one of them ones on how the only thing you could compare this to is when when the great when paganism in Europe at the classical era, you know, Greeks and Rome, fell to Christianity. That was yeah. the only time that it was comp and what they did during that fall, at, you know, around three four hundred A.D., around three thirty three in Rome and so on. Yeah, what yeah. they did was they, called, they were burlesque pagans, yeah. so yeah. they were dressed in, dress dressed the, the the priest at the temple of Jupiter at the or the Oracle of Adel of Delphi up in clown costumes or make them do things before they execute them, and I see so much of this wearing the mask when they know it's, oh, it's yeah. it, the infection rates have gone up this whole thing uh they're laughing at them they're laughing at yeah. the normal people uh, the normal they are, they and the normal they're burlesquing them they're burlesquing them they seem to be doing doing just that don't they and i don't think well, they the want to the pot banging thing in england was a humiliation ritual i don't oh, care ridiculous, I was wasn't it? It was. yeah i think brian gary garish said uh he said We've got to all, they've all got the clap. They've all got the clap. Well, thank God that's all out the way. I hope that's all out the way because I think it's time to form positive thought patterns, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And definitely. also to, uh, you know, we're kind of lucky in a way that we've been given a blank slate and everything yeah, is yeah. new, you know. Well, I think as a someone who's been released from prison, you know, uh, when they, they've been locked up for years and they, they've been, say they've been unconverly convicted or something, and they're not a criminal, they get out of prison and everything will be new again. They will want to experience life in every way. And that's, that's how pe I feel people like us are going to approach it. We're going to get out there and appreciate things like ancient sites and, you know, everything. You know, even flying yeah. and taking trips yeah. in other countries more than we ever have. Well, we've already appreciated them enough, but I think it's going to be even more now. Well, I think I don't think that the life's going to be the same afterwards than it is before, because we we've had a massive learning experience, mm. and uh, and when we look at things, and we're going to appreciate things that much more. I'll definitely appreciate my megaliths even more. I've already set I've already set up my times over for next year just as a spell. To say, come on, we're going to go, we're going to go, and um, hopefully we'll be able to do a tour in the in the in the summer as well, which we've been talking about. Uh, so that yeah, needs planning, yeah. and and these and these talks where we hopefully get a little group of people because you you've got a lot of people that follow you, and I'm trying to build my YouTube channel up. So hopefully we can build something positive as a group. Yeah, I, I'm seeing this as a community of people who want to get back into the world of <laughs> megaliths, magic and mythology uh, in a new kind of way. The way mm. I see it is that, uh, you know, we're a new a community that can actually uh, be positive. We can be almost like a, a club or something. Yeah, Moving yeah. forward, one of these, the first of these videos will be on your channel. The second yeah. of the videos will be on my, uh, my channel. And mm. we'll bounce them back and forth and share them around. And eventually, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, we, we'll, the idea is to create a place where people who are sick and tired of all the negativity, we've been through that. And yeah. so let's talk about things that we'll find, you know, exciting to like you know, yeah, yeah. Get, our, get our juices flowing again. You know, that's yeah, what yeah. this is all about. You know, we're not, we, you know, we still have our health. We still have our abilities. And uh, as long as, we, you know, as my granddad used to say, as long as you can get out of bed in the morning on your own, you're doing great. And <laughs> so you know, we're all doing great. We're yeah. all doing great. <laughs> you know, once we haven't been drinking the night before, of course. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's you know, that's people always talk about a new year, a new a new leaf. I I see this as a new aeon, a new leaf. It kind of leaf. is, really, isn't it? Yeah, because this is a whole yeah, we can see a whole new start. I was uh, I did a. A video on my channel about a few about the Knights Templar, and I started looking at my old books again, you know, from like the Mysteries of the Cathars and the Cathar and the Rendler Chateau, and I just started getting excited again about all these things that I think because I've been doing it so long, it's like twenty years doing tours now, it, it starts to get a little bit repetitive after a while, and you just fit into the mold. And because there's been a break, and then we've gone, but I've gone back to it. 
it's all become exciting again, you know. It's like to talk about it and uh, and just get dive back in there. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I really enjoyed your book on the Cathars and the uh, Cathar country. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, what I liked about it was it was very emotional. And yeah. <laughs> it's funny. And, I mean, it was good to read that because it was like, you know, it's supposed to be. It's a horrible thing, but also an amazing thing. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, the thing is, after I finished reading your book, I went back to my library and I found my uh, copy of Sean Martin's The Greatest Heresy. Uh, ah. On the Cathars, you know, reading that again, he was as he was as emotional as you, yeah, he, in a different way, you know. Obviously, but he wanted to express it the way you did. Obviously, his editor had toned it down, which shows that this that's a very powerful energy connect. I mean, the Cathars don't exist anymore, but the the energy that they've left in the world is the magic. Oh, yeah. they, their magic is as powerful as ever. It really is, isn't it? And uh, that's kind of a. An example of what I was saying. I remember all those years ago when I was first going into all these things. It was exciting and passionate, and it, it sort of over the years it creeps away, but it's it's definitely come back. And you, you said the, the whole thing about um, the the cathars and the whole and um, everything that happened to them. It, it is it's universal, isn't it? It's something that you can really. What well, it's a whole thing, a whole subject, not subject, uh, an ethos. That you can learn from the what from what went on, and it's, it's like it was like another bad thing in history that came and went, and now we're going through well, another bad thing in history which will come and it will go. Well, the, the Cathars is echoed going back four hundred years before by what was done by the, you know, the, the, the Charlemagne and the Carolingian Empire to the pagan yeah, yeah. Saxons. And then before that, another 400 years and what was done to the classical pagans in Rome and the classical world. And, you know, they, they don't do it with violence anymore because they don't have to. They do it with mind control and they've been working. on That's how they do it now. Mm. But it's the same thing that they, they've always been. They don't like any group that's different or is outside control being controlled. And this goes back right back to the, uh, I mean, people give the Roman Empire a hard time, but the Roman Empire left you alone once you didn't do two things. Stop paying your taxes and started an army. Otherwise, you were safe. Yeah. You, you had all the religious freedom you wanted and everything else. And um, it, when, the, when the pagan Roman Empire ended and the Christian Roman Empire began under Constantine and on, it became the template for where we live today. Yeah, yeah, we, must yeah. obey, we, we will rewire, reset your mind. And if you don't want to be reset in a huge number, we'll take you out. And that's why I think it's a great time for small tribes of people like what we're doing here, not to, you know, not to start the new society, but to find just like there's always been survivors that, and groups that survived the main thing, you know, the main event. And I think that's the, the the moral for the future, is to do this. Well, I've always I've always been one for flying under the radar, and I think it's a, it's 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 that's the way to um, it's just been it just is me. That's what I've always done, and I think a new group would be the same thing, wouldn't it? It would uh, you'd be carry on doing exactly what you want, but you wouldn't be um, upfront and sort of hugely sort of ad advertising yourself and saying someone it just bit of people doing because things have things have changed in a way that in such a, a, a vast way for me that I don't see the world in the same way again. I always felt like I suppose a lot of people watch this that I didn't kind of really belong like somebody had made a mistake and dropped me in the wrong world. But but that has that has multiplied by ninety percent. Now it's like I'm sure I'm in the wrong place. Well, definitely, and I, if you, I'm definitely believing all that at the moment. And I've been bringing this up in my own vlogs. It's the whole thing of I do believe strongly in multiple realities and parallel. Universe. Well, science does, so why not? You know, Absolutely. the multiverse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not radical, and uh, I don't. I'm not putting out anything they, they they don't believe in. And I do believe that if we switch our consciousness and our cognition mm. away from uh, the programming and the black magic that they're imposing upon humanity 
that we will actually build a better reality for anyone who wants it by okay. not being not being allowing yourself to fall under their spell and instead of them spellbinding you you work with your own mind to create your own yeah, reality yeah. i mean uh, i know we both uh, enjoy the tarot as well and i took the tarot from the the western mystery tradition and that is very very much that you will create whatever you think you create and uh, everything everything is a, everything is a magical spell really from a thought to create to create something which is kind of what we're doing now we're, we're thinking of creating something and that is a magical spell and if everybody start and if everybody thinks in that way then that is going to change to change the reality to, to, to face it and i think now is the time to do it isn't it because we've been through a type of um unreal uncertainty haven't we it's like i don't know sometimes you can you can think um oh i think i know what's going to happen because i can feel that the future is this i can feel that the future is that but haven't we been through a period do you agree that we just couldn't feel what was going to happen because it was oh, in flux it was in change definitely there was a sense of uh well i mean to bring it make to make it a bit more kind of mysterious is that ast astrologers are not getting readings from next year the oh, ones i know well. and, the, and i'm not when i try to do tarot card readings of few in, in those kinds of oracles in looking in the past 2020 i can't get readings either they're crazy they don't make any sense they're confusing and they feel wrong so this suggests to me that the definitely is a new reality coming in and it's probably well i'm almost certain of it. it's the one that we're creating the oh, reason yeah. why we're not the reason why the, 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 those of us who have kind of like jumped are jump are slipping out of the matrix or, or better still a parallel reality to the present matrix yeah. uh, the reason why we're not getting these readings from the future is because the future is yet to be created by us if we were in the right. matrix and in the mainstream and believing everything the BBC tells us, we would be getting clear cut readings. And this is why we're not, because we're literally building the reality on the other side of this. Yeah, and people, um, the people like us are going to be building the positive side now, even though a lot of people uh, that I know really well are so full of fear and they're, they're full, of, they're so into the whole um, Rona thing that they can't even, they're not. They're, they're forming things in the wrong direction. I, I have to tell people, you know, don't get entangled in this, literally. We're constantly yeah. entangled in it. Otherwise, you're going to make it worse. You're going to make it carry on. And uh, But what about all the people, like the NCPs, and is that right, that uh, are just, I wonder if they can create, they can create in a way, because just by doing it, that's what will happen. But I wonder if they have the same power, because they don't seem to have the same spirituality maybe well they don't have the internal dialogue that we do mm. and they operate as programming they're everything is a kind of a pavlovian conditioning that's been given to them and they don't have the ability to do this but what ha, what held the, the the black sorcery of the matrix the, the ones in charge how they do it is is they get the npcs and they tell them what the future is going to be yeah. this has gone on for a long time yeah, now yeah. you know the tomorrow's world and the bbc back in the day mm. and this is what you're going to have and so they, they they believe that this is fated that this is the only yeah. thing there is so, so they, they bring they, that they, into they fruition have, yeah it's like the way i can all you know this is one of the reasons i know I, rem, I know the matrix is breaking down is when we were growing up specific youth cultures were very common you know like mods punks goths metalheads mm. teddy boys they were very demarcated and they they can't, you know, you had teddy boys mods rockers hippies punks you know there was a cutoff yeah, point yeah. and and you and, and yeah. so much of that was created by the music industry mm. you're you, you you were a mod last week you're going to be a hippie this week and they all fell for it yeah, and yeah. what when the music the music industry was used as and i'm not putting down the music because it was great it was fantastic music and great memories and everything but that doesn't exist anymore uh there's a mishmash now and that tells me yeah. that you know we, if you look at the youth today they don't really have an identity of their they're own they're, no, no. They're, 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 they're just like blobs of existence yeah and i thought that. Part, yeah, yeah. yeah and you know they don't have that i mean i've been watching old 
interviewers with teenagers in Ireland and the UK and America from the 80s, 60s and 70s. And they had a, they had a spark of life in their eyes yeah, the yeah, ones yeah. they don't have. And it's really strange. Uh, they're falling out of reality. We're, they're dissolving away as kind of homiculum. And they're falling, they're falling away. And that's what's happening. And you will start to see as we become, as we develop this mindset of, we're not gonna go like that down that road, we're gonna build our own future. You'll start to see uh, more clued in young people appearing within this, when we're in the thought form that we create, uh, the reality tunnel to use a Robert Anton Wilson thing. And it's very important uh, that that's reality falling away. It's just like when you find out your friend that you thought was clued in about this stuff, and they're the ones that are the most now the most fanatic following yeah. the government bullshit. Yeah. They, you know, they're falling yeah. away. They're 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 falling out of your reality, and we have to let them go. And this is the whole important thing, and bring in new people and new ideas and new ways of thinking. And that's that's one of the clear signs of the parallel reality, and also the Mandela the Mandela effect. I really do now believe that started a few years ago. That was the beginning mm. of the new reality falling apart. And people who are literally remembering the truth, but it didn't exist in this new reality anymore. Yeah, that was really strange. A lot, wasn't of, it? a lot of that kind of thing. And the ones who I and the ones that don't get the Mandela effect or don't remember these things, you know, this you know, they say things like, "Oh, it's just bad memory." No, they're the NPCs because they're trapped within. They're still trapped in the old, the old reality. Mm. I know really? for a fact that there's something definite to that Mandela effect. Absolutely, there is. You know, it's, it's a shame, isn't it, when you look at um, yeah. our, our youth. I mean, it was just dynamic, wasn't it, really? I mean, all the, the, the music and the arts and the, and everything was just... And we had so much freedom. And it seems now yeah. over the... I mean, I think this... Over the last few years, freedom has been stamped on from every direction, hasn't it? You're not allowed to say this. Yeah. You're not allowed to do that. If you think yeah. there's something wrong with you... If you have that, if you have your own free ideas, there's something wrong with you. And I, I think if that hadn't happened, then I don't think we would have. This would have been able to happen. The reason of uh, sort of no. Rona things, oh, it's because our freedom, they wouldn't have let our freedoms be taken away, and, and uh, as we were. That's what. Well, that's why. They, that's why they destroyed comedians like you know Baron Manning and Benny. Yeah, yeah. Because and they made people soft and sensitive. You know, I used to laugh my head off at Bernard Manning's Irish jokes. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you why. A, they were funny, and B, there was no hatred in there. There was no, no malice. Fun, really. Yeah, it, yeah he, he, it wasn't meant in a hateful way. It was, <laughs> they were yeah. funny jokes. And every, everybody got it, didn't they? If you had the audacity yeah, to and, stand and, up and go to the loo, you got it, no matter who you were. <laughs> Yeah, if you were start, if you were in his, if, if you were standing next to the English people that were laughing, it's a joke, and you were laughing too. They they buy a pint afterwards. They wouldn't have a, a, this. It wasn't. This is the thing we're told that this this generated hate. It did. It, it, it did the opposite. It made people comfortable. And it almost did, yeah, yeah. their own egos and things like that. You know, and um, it's you know this is one of the, one of the true signs of enlightenment is the ability to be able to laugh at yourself. And that was something mm -hmm. that people on these islands, English, Scottish, Irish, Welsh, were very good at. We, were we had a, yeah. you know, and Americans used to be quite taken back in the old mm -hmm. days of how we used to make fun of ourselves. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. you made fun of the Queen, or you made fun of, you know, the Pope, or you know, we'd laugh, at, we'd laugh about it. Yeah. And that was that yeah. was true freedom because it was the we, irony of it of all at all, which we could see. The irony the of it, and, irony. All, yeah. and also the ability that we knew that it wasn't us as individuals; it was a collective weird yeah. thing yeah yeah you know you know uh but uh, societies where they didn't have this ability we're like why are you making joke about your country or your people or your religion you know and they've done that they they, they, they took that and they re-engineered that as political correctness and now that was all gone wasn't it and that's how they got to the people on these islands that's how they got yeah and that's how like, done it. also places in america where they had that kind of set like new york Brooklyn, the Bronx, they had the same culture. They'd laugh and make fun of each other and mm. themselves. And they killed that places like that too. Oh, it's such a shame because it was, uh, it, it created freedom, didn't it? And it created togetherness. You, you, people, yeah. people just, it reduced stress. You know, people are now het up all the time. It, it seems like there's a lot more anxiety in society generally. 
you know, people are careful what they do, careful what they say. And... Oh, I worked on building sites in New York when I first got there, working up painting houses. And to be like Irish fellas, Jewish fellas, Italian fellas, black fellas, Latino fellas, mm. if, 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 the, if the, the conversations and the slagging matches we had were heard today, you would have the hate ones oh, of yeah, 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 yeah. it. It was just how it, they used to make fun of me for being Irish all the time. And I, I didn't go, how dare you? I burst out laughing. That's mm. just how it was, you know? But I was, well, I, my early, early work was a psychiatric nurse. And those days in the, in the, the huge psychiatric hospitals, and then I was in the prisons, but it was, uh, oh, yeah. The way we, where we were with each other would be, they think we were insane now. <laughs> but it was, but it was, a, it was, you had, it was gallows humour and it was, um, it brought you together as a group. And there was, but there was yeah. never any animosity really. It was just fun. You just, you know, and you have to put up with it because it was, a, and it, it's also made you a lot stronger. Yeah, because, uh, well, it helped you. It was, it was therapeutic. Yeah, it was, yeah. Because if you couldn't stand up to the, the banter of the guys, then, you know, you, you had to learn. And that's, um, uh, uh, that's, how you got through life. Uh, Spike Milligan's book, uh, My my Part in the Downfall of Adolf Hitler, it's his memoirs of, in the Italian campaign in World War II. And it's some of the things he talks about, like they're in these, like that was a ferocious battle. The Americans lost more troop, troops in Italy than they did anywhere else. And it was actually the only part of the World War II campaign that had numbers that were you know, casualty numbers on par with the Eastern Front. And because uh, the Germans were able to uh, hold the mountains all the way back as defensive positions. And, and uh, he was telling the things he was talking about, the most horrific battle things going on. And that in the middle of a battle, they'd be all making fun of each other and telling jokes. Yeah. And this was well, the way, way of dealing with it. I saw it as a teenager working as a dishwasher in a big, a big, a big restaurant for this, this big place in Dublin I worked in. And... Uh, the slagging and the, and, oh, and, it God, was, yeah, yeah. and it was unbelievable, but it was really funny as well. Mm. And it stopped blow ups in these this high pressure kitchen between the waiters and the chefs. You know, it would stop these blow ups from happening yeah, yeah. by all the way making fun of each other. Yeah, uh, it's a shame it's all gone. I mean, uh, I suppose yeah. now he'd be seen as bullying, wouldn't it? But uh, in those days, yeah. it was fun. So anyway, but that's all gone. Yeah, things have changed massively. And it all, I think we've lost a lot. I mean, even yeah. the music industry as well. Now we've got Sam and Cowell. Instead of all these fantastic bands coming out of uh, probably negative circumstances, it, it, now it's yeah. just so plastic. Um, it just seems like uh, karaoke singers, really, that you're seeing Blackpool on a Saturday night. Awesome. But, uh, it, it's all gone, yeah. hasn't it? It's all that's gone. And it, it's a shame. Well, it, and it, nothing it, seems to... Sorry? People have become softer. They have, yeah, and, and weaker. Yeah, and, and, and you know what they say. You know what they say. The most, the most, the most treacherous and devious individual on this earth is a weak and frightened little man. And they've made yeah. just about everybody into weak and frightened little men with they this have, they? Yeah, yeah. And, and therefore they oh, make God, them extremely yeah. treacherous. And you you can really, you don't, you don't know who you can trust. Yeah, you don't know. But nothing seems oh, I, to have taken the place of the society that was there before. It just seems to turn into a bland society now, where people are just trying to think of ways to uh, complain about things and bring things down, tear things down, uh, instead of build things up. Yeah. Well, I automatically trust people who, who know this is a farce, the, the whole corona thing, who know yeah. it's, uh, yeah, there is a disease and everything, it does exist. Uh, there, there is people dying, but it, it didn't. This didn't need to happen. I automat people who have the same viewpoint as us. I automatically trust, or at least I'll yeah. give them enough benefit of doubt to trust them. Absolutely. But yeah. I, I've lost. So I, I've had friends who and people I've worked with who have just become ter become terrified ninnies, and yeah. I don't think yeah, I'll ever. Yeah. I, I don't think I'll ever feel the same way about them ever again. I, I look at them. I wouldn't say in disgust. It's more in a, a case I look at them in, in extreme disappointment. Disappointment's the word, isn't it? Yeah, and it just and it shows uh, what they really thought 
rather than what they said they thought earlier. You actually see mm. into the person then, don't you, by their actions. Uh, oh boy, greatest education ever. It's been a massive well, education. Like fear and loathing shows the true person, you know, it does. It does, but the uh, good thing is we can change fear through uh, through what we're thinking of doing, hopefully, into love and love and fear and love is opposite to fear and and yep. positivity building something is the opposite to tearing things down so uh i mean i'm a great i'm a great believer in adventures oh and yeah the adventure yeah. an adventure is an antidote to tyranny i've always i've always looked at i've always called it the next chapter in life what's the next chapter yeah. in life going to be and we're definitely coming to yeah. the end of a chapter if not a, not a yeah. whole section so it's now to go and yeah turn the book turn the page and start the new the next chapter and, uh, and there's no better time really is there it, no what well, do? i mean i've always went to the megalithic sites and ancient sites and whatever i wanted mm. to discover always with a sense of adventure it doesn't matter if it's in ireland or it's in the other side of the world i've always went for a sense of adventure and i tell you something neil i'm um, that sense of adventure is going to be multiplied by a hundred when it starts <laughs> when, when we start yeah. doing this again isn't it just fold. Absolutely, oh, isn't it? Absolutely, but yeah. I mean, the megaliths have sat there. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, we, we won't worry about dates and authentic dates, but let's just say 5,000 years. They've been sitting there. Everything has happened, doesn't it? All the different empires from the Romans, the, the Vikings have come, societies have risen and fallen, wars have come and gone. Christianity was, uh, what, 2,000 years old? They were there 3,000 3, years earlier. It's um, I mean, if you believe in, is it psychometry, the, the memory of stones? Yeah, psychometry, I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, imagine the memory there. And uh, I also strongly believe in the memory of sight as well. Uh, not, not sight, but the sights themselves. You know, people have come and people go and uh, mm. things happen. They leave so what, a psychic what, what, imprint. Sorry? They leave a psychic imprint. A psychic imprint. So what a, what a yeah, exactly, what a better place to start yeah. this, this new world which we're going to create. Yeah, I was talking to a chap from Poland and Poland, when you, I, I assume that there wasn't very many megaliths in Poland because Poland is what's the path, is the battlefield of Europe. It's it all Napoleon, the Germans, the, the Soviets, everyone has gone through that, you know, the, for hundreds of years, right back to Frederick Barbarossa. Mm. You know, it's always done the, the, the Teutonic Knights. And you think that how could any megaliths have survived, you know, because they would have been natural defense positions in World War II and stuff like that from tanks and artillery. And uh, sure enough, talking to some Polish chaps, he says there's megaliths all over the place. They're just really? megaliths are just not a big thing in Poland. But he says they're all over the place and they've survived. Well, I, I have so somebody. If they, if they can survive in a place like Poland, then, you know, what are we afraid of this virus for? Well, exactly. They've, they've, they've been there all these years. They're the regulars to me. Just look at, oh, just another little thing. It'll be over in a couple of years. I forget about it. I, I had um, some uh, a, a lady from Croatia who was um, who got in touch with me just before all this started. They invited me over to look at all the megaliths in Croatia. She said there's there's thousands of them. So I, yeah. I've lost in touch with her now, but I would hope I would love to be able to do that because there's so much to. Yeah. Yeah, they're everywhere. There's such a lot to to discuss and to to discover. So maybe the next talk we can get involved in more right further into the megalithic sites and maybe if maybe if there's any particular sites that people watching the video want us to look into, they can leave. Yeah. A message, and we can. Fact, really... fact, that's an interesting. That's an interesting idea for a for a discussion. It's mm -hmm. megaliths in unknown places that you don't expect them. Like you said, Croatia, North America, India, Sri Lanka, you know, Korea, Japan. We could talk about them. This is a universal thing, and uh, it's it's almost like we only think that they only exist in Europe and maybe Turkey and some of the Middle East and North Africa, but they really are everywhere, everywhere. Imagine, well, I always wonder about um, the chambered tombs, which seem to be the universal thing. It's like one, yeah. once upon a time there was a one world government because the things seem to everywhere throughout the planet. 
<laughs> a controversial, a controversial thought, but it would make you wonder, wouldn't it? Or maybe well, it was just one world religion. I went to a megalithic site in Sri Lanka and it was exactly the same as Kara Moran's here in Sligo. Right. It was, it was, except the soil was red and it was hot and there were cobras, but it was the same. They're the, absolutely the, the same the, everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've never been to the States, but uh, a lot of the people that come on my tours from the States talk about things that seem like sauternes or, or chambered tombs. And they, they call them, uh, they, 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 were, they were called um, like cellars for food, but they said they are, they just look like chambered tombs. Uh, yeah, so, some of them are cellars for apples and potatoes and things like that. To store them in the freezing cold over the winter. There's definitely, and some of them do get mistaken for megaliths because they do look like what right. we have here. The other ones are definitely megaliths. And on top of that, okay, we, if you describe all those souterrains, those types of, mm. you know, uh, chambered chambered boxes or chambered megaliths in the U.S. or structures, there's plenty of stone circles. Uh, there's in place like Massachusetts, there's plenty of them, and um, there's in especially in Western Massachusetts, there's at least one absolute definite stone circle that's built to the same style as the U.K. and Irish. And that's, Iberian that's stone circles, identical. That's, in, that's interesting because stone circles are, are you don't really see them out, out yeah. of our islands, do you? You don't see yeah. them in Europe. You the, the European we, like, well, we had that fascinating was, talk, didn't we, outside in the garden here when we brought all the uh, the different shapes and sizes of the old but all, all the European you get are different. Portugal and Spain, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. and that's still rare, they're still rare. Well, the ones in Portugal weren't actually, uh, they're not actually a proper circle, are they? They're in a kind of an arrangement of... But you know, the, ever, very, uh, the ever ones are like interlaced circles, almost like the, the compressed version of the Olympic symbol. But there's definite circles in there. There's definite circles. They, they're overlapping because if you, I took some good photos, some good images with my drone, and you can clearly oh, see right. from a book. There are interlaced circles. So when you're there, it just seems like a mass of standing stones. Yeah. But as there are also there's different kinds of stones as well that they've used for different parts of the circle, the, the different circles of the note. So well, nicely they, shaped uh, towards the top as well. Yeah, where where it, there may have been an original circle, and then they did some lunar or solar alignments or whatever, and then another circle and next to it. So now it just looks like from ground level a cluster. Right. But when you look at it from above, you can definitely see the circles. And it's a wonderful place, isn't it? And there are lots of little yeah. sites all around there, all, all around the Evra region. Yeah. yeah. And there's, tons of stuff there. there's supposed to be more in, in uh, the Elvash area. And I, I always want to go and visit those. And I had, a, I had, a, I had a, a, a tour all set to go. I've never been there before. And uh, I really wanted to see them. But unfortunately, that seems to fall through. Well, there's so many more things we can plan. Yeah, the northern Portugal is full of megaliths, full of yeah. them, and they're just not as well advertised or anything. But it's, it, it, there, there's as many there as you get in Brittany, and they're as complex and diverse as well. And they're from, or they're, they're, it's a lot like the Sardinian ones. Right. You know, it's the yeah, whole yeah. theory that the reason why Irish people have Sardinian DNA is because the same culture that they're, 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 they're the proto that the the people have the highest cluster of proto. Proto European DNA are Sardinians, and after them is the Northern Portuguese, the Galicians, the Basques, the, not, the, not the Basques, the Galicians, the Spaniards, and then Irish people. So it was probably, and then Scottish people. So it was probably the same culture that migrated. Yeah, well, it was. Yeah, it was yeah. the same culture. And that's why for the megaliths have so much similarities. For the same reason that you get Maltese people like the Alaman people because yeah. that is all on that of course I call the Western Fringe trading route it goes right into the Med right the way up um, probably between what is now Ireland and the Alaman and, and oh, right the way up to Orkney so that yeah. huge trading route all the way all the way along a megalith formed along it so um, yeah. so and, yeah and, and 5,000 years ago you could even walk them so there was before the sea levels rose so absolutely yeah yeah before the, the little ice age melted yep. so what we're going to do in the next talk is going to be megalithic a sort, uh, a sort of um, 
a, a type of megalithic talk in the next one. But we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. decide in the meantime which how we're going to do it. Is that what you reckon? Yeah, I'll give I'll give a little rundown of a megalithic site I was in 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 a few in a couple of places. Maybe you can do the same. Yeah. And a rundown of what we're working on. You have just got back. Well, you didn't just get back, but you made a video of a tour you did in Yorkshire back in before the oh, lockdown. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. And, oh, yeah, of course, put, yeah. I, mean, I, I knew you were there, but you, you only put the video up now. And um, you were you were showing in that that Druid's Temple. Yeah, now, I know yeah, it's, yeah. Like it's, it's it's like Coral Castle. It may yeah. be a modern yeah. folly, but definitely you, you, it, it, there's I, something about it. It's not it's not a dud. Put it this way. Yeah, when when you're older, I, I'll take you to it because everybody else says, "Oh, it's an old folly." Uh, no, and if it was it was built in the the 1880s, so and that was a time when a lot of the secret societies were were yeah. forming, wasn't it? As so the Golden Dawn and the OTO and all the other ones. So I'm sure that this and a lot of the people uh, and the, the person who did it, we, it was it was uh, Swinton, I think it was the hall, Swinton yeah. Hall, and he. Um, it was the Lord from there who, who built this thing. And it's incredible when you see it. I mean, the pictures don't even give it uh, give it the credence it should have. But yeah. something was going on there, you know. It's, you, yeah. you can definitely. I mean, it, that was built for some secret organisation. And it, it's never mentioned, but we walk into it. It stands out a mile, you know. It's, well, I, when next time you come, I'll take you there and, you, and I'll show you. Yeah. And they probably got the stones from an existing megalithic site, and, and and they're not far anyway from some serious megaliths anyway, in the area. So well, it, yeah, it's like megalith- the Devil's Arrows and the the Thornborough yeah. Henges, etc. Yeah, Thornborough especially. Yeah, so it's that you know it is a megalithic country in, in that part of Yorkshire, and so they may have like you were talking about psychometry earlier on. They may have took, taken so- stones that had psychometric imprints in them from existing megaliths and brought them to the what you know to the Druid's Temple. The, yeah, they could well, yeah. And the, and the thing is pretty huge as well. There's a chamber at the back. And he actually lived there for, I think it was, he said he was going to live there for seven years. I'm not sure he made it, but it's, uh, it, it just blows your brain. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I see that area as um, a, a pilgrimage route or, a, or, a, or a, a pilgrimage, a place to pilgrimage to uh, from the Devil's Arrows to around Thornborough Henges. I think they would, yeah, and they, yeah. each, each of the Thorber Henges would uh, accommodate easily 2,000 people. So that, that could have been a massive European pilgrimage route. And the, and the Thorber, and the Druid's Temple isn't far from that. So yeah. it really makes you think. Well, like the Avebury, it could have been a later addition to it. So it's like that these secret societies knew the magic procession, magical processions. That took place and then ad- added to it, you know, and carried on. Yeah. On the thing, that once there's enough psychic energy, emotional and spiritual and psychological psychological charge poured into a site, it absorbs it. It absorbs there's something about stone and absorbs it, and it's shaped in a certain way. Where you, you showed me that those pilgrimage sites in the north in in Cumbria where we were then, yeah. and you know they you know it was very apparent they were pilgrimage sites. A lot a lot of them were you know today you can't see them because of trees and hedgerows, but a lot of them were line of sight. They were visible line of sight. Absolutely. So what yeah. you so what you have in Avebury with that processional thing from the, the circles mm. all the way up to you know the, the avenue to over Sil- Silbury Hills and then towards uh, West Kennet, that's obviously a processional path. Oh, and yeah. so that, that existed everywhere from Stonehenge. I think they were throughout Britain, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not, the, the, the Boyne Valley absolutely gives you that impression, although they, especially as the new discoveries are constantly made there all the time by ground radar. Remember we spoke about uh, Sharp. Uh, there was a, the, that was the, remember the Kempau Stone Circle is right next to the railway line now. So we went up there and we looked at the rail, the train came flying by. And then there used to be an avenue 70 foot wide that went off like an, a, a mile and a quarter onto Skull Hill Hill. So these things, it just makes me think that Britain and Ireland, as it was one long, uh, one mass, was um, yeah. a, a, really, a holy island, you know? 
I agree with that. Yeah, a whole, there was a whole. Well, I believe it's the remnants of what they call Atlantis. Well, I do you know, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, they were in the right place and everything, and the the sea levels did rise, and you know, Doggerland did go under the sea, and, yeah, yeah. and you know, there was massive flooding, and we know that, and there are megaliths under the sea. I, I mean, I've shown that one on my channel, we're on room three one three of the the one in County Cork, and it's in the water. You know, it's in the sea. And that was on dry land at one time. So it, it just goes to show you that there's that that's the mystery there. See, this thing is what you said about the one in Shap, where you said it, it goes under the railway line. You have to, you know, it's one thing watching videos on the internet. It's one thing looking at books, but you don't fully appreciate the megalith until you're actually yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why it's, it's, these are so important to visit them. But because a camera or a video camera will never capture the peripheral sensations oh, yeah. and yes, awareness. Yeah. You know, like when we went to see the uh, the, the Janus figure on, on yeah. Boa Island in, in Enniskillen, you know, yeah, there's a statue was there, but didn't that whole like mm -hmm. cemetery have a phenomenal energy about it? Oh, With the it ring, just... circle of trees around it and then the mod, it didn't yeah. matter, and then the, you know, the, the, the Lundy man beside them. It just, yeah. it was like, okay, you understand. It, 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 it's more than just the, the, this, this ancient megalithic statue. Yeah, it's, those statues it's, were amazing. It's everything. It's everything. You know, and then everything. Think, about, think about Castle Rig, where you've got yeah. an amazing stone circle, but it's like there's another circle around it, which is the mountains. It's theatre. Oh, the two together are just uh, yeah. amazing. Because you, you stand looking at the circle, but everybody stands looking out at the, yeah. at the, the surrounding, the surrounding um, what you call it, like a, an amphitheater of mountains around it. Absolutely amazing. So, so we'll do a tour then, hopefully starting in the north of England. And because I know the north of England's best of anywhere, really. Yeah. And uh, well, we'll put it together over the next few months and hopefully. By the, sec by the second half of summer next year, we'll be able to run it. So if anybody wants to, uh, you know, get uh, get involved in that, you know, that's uh, that yeah. maybe about twenty people, so a small coach, something like that. Yeah. Watch these videos as it progresses because it's sort of like, uh, you know, it, it it's it it'll get you it'll get you in the in the atmosphere of what we're hoping to attempt. The megaliths have been closed off. They've had mm -hmm. a natural regenerative period. They this, are, uh, they? Yeah. Pe people who've never visited megaliths before because they couldn't go on foreign holidays have visited them. The energies have changed. They're, they're, there's a new vibe to them in the new world. And by engaging with them and going there and talking about them and being in the right company yeah, around them, yeah, yeah gives you a chance to regenerate yourself and remind you that with all the crap that goes on down in the world we transcend it absolutely yeah i mean it's it's, it's something i've been doing this over 20 years and it and it's 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 the site itself and it's also the talking about the site later you know over dinner that sort of thing and and everything yeah. comes together and the ideas I'm, come I'm, forward I'm, 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 a few beers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, yeah. Laugh, the, the, the laugh and the cracks you have going there in the morning. I always find yeah. it amazing. Like I'd be telling jokes and having a good laugh as we're going down to the site. And then when you get to the site, it's almost like you enter into a cathedral. The atmosphere yeah, changes. Yeah. Yeah, Everybody yeah. becomes kind of reverent or, or something like that. And that's because they're 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 feeling the full the full impact of the of the main the one the one that. That happens most is Swinside in the south, because you do that long walk up and you talk and you're chatting away and you see it. You think, wow. Then you walk in and it's like everything's quiet. Everybody just thinks, wow. It's, a bit, it's hit by the atmosphere and the energy of the place. You 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 won't you'll that, remember. Yeah. That one we visited in Northern Ireland that we couldn't find that we found on the, in the middle of a field on the side of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. I forget the name again. I mean, that thing was, there was most of it had been gone, but that had a tremendous atmosphere. That had a tremendous atmosphere and there wasn't much of it left. And again, it was because the mountains and the, the, the scenery around us, there was just oh. something about it. 
Is that the one where there was a few? Well, there was a few in the field, and quite a lot have been yeah, taken we, away. We, we, we couldn't we couldn't find it, and then we we, we parked a van literally on a in a tiny narrow boreen, and we had you fell on the gate. Remember coming back? <laughs> yeah, and, I remember that. Yeah. I, I, I warned <laughs> you not to fall on the gate. Like, well, like, <laughs> well, I was looking at it. I was saying that thing is that thing is disintegrating, but it was like I guess we yeah. were in, we were we were excited. Well, you know, my head and I had to pull up the van really close to the fence. I thought, I'm going to climb over that style, yeah. and I just collapsed underneath me. <laughs> yeah, that happened to me at Drumbeg in Cork. I was so delighted to see the, the, the stone circle that I slipped on <laughs> wood on the grass and went down on my leg and really hurt it. But it was like, I didn't care. I mean, I still did it. But it well, was, uh, it's, it's funny. It, it's almost like there's a healing properties to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I well my problem fall. was it was it was my beer drinking wrist that I that I, that I bent backwards, so it was hard work uh, picking the guineas up in the evening. It's uh, yeah, yeah a terrible. That's, that's, thing. Another part, that's another great part of it in the evening after you have been and having a good mm. pints and talking about and stuff like that. It's brilliant in some lovely pub somewhere or a fire or something. Oh, absolutely, for some beautiful hotel. It, 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 it's just you can't underestimate how how wonderful that feels. They, they almost sit down like a like an old general uh, yeah. talking about a battle that you just won. It just you're just sitting there and you're in a lovely, a lovely old pub hat with a pint of beer and talking about you know what you visited that day. It's it's, it's just you can't it's it's just that yeah. naked feeling. You've really earned earned your beer and you go in yeah. and it's like you've had your battle. Oh, and you've sat down the best, and the best pint ever yeah. So we'll yeah. build these. Two, we'll build these, we will build these two. So hopefully all you guys, all you people out there, sort of uh, look at, watch this space and we'll, we'll because we're, we started our little community now, we've made a start with our first film and yep. uh, the tour will build and hopefully people will um, uh, subscribe to this, my YouTube um, account because uh, YouTube channel, because I'm trying to build it up. Um, it's a long, hard process, but uh, a lot of effort is going into it, and hopefully it'll come across. I would very much appreciate it, everybody did. Yep. And um, so um, I think so. the next video will be on your channel. Thomas Sheldon's uh, channel, I to say. And what we'll do is there'll be a playlist created, so you can watch the whole playlist eventually, and it'll bounce back between each channel. Yeah, that sounds a good way to do it, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. And the next talk will be on megalith so if like I say anybody does want any particular site that what I was just to mention and go through just write it in the in the comments below uh, below uh, here not, also topics like uh, magic and uh, tarot and you know even paranormal things we're both very interested in that stuff mm. as well so yeah I mean anything like that yeah so yeah well because we could, we'll do this every Thursday if we can or definitely yeah. every once a week and yeah. uh and that's it and that's uh well that's it for now isn't it i suppose it's we made a start yep and uh, i will see you on my channel next week and everybody Brilliant. else that's fantastic and uh so see you all soon bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye